Hello, I'm Martin Warren, I'm a geologist and I've been living and working in North Norfolk for around 40 years. So I've had the opportunity of seeing the coast changing and collecting fossils. And I'm going to show you some if I can. Why don't you come with me? This North Norfolk coast has been given the name the Deep History Coast. And basically, the deeper down you go, the further back in time you go. Just emerging from the receding tide, the chalk, which is our bedrock in Norfolk, it underlies pretty well the whole county. Now the chalk goes back to the days of the dinosaurs, that's uh, a little over 70 million years here of the age of this chalk. But the rocks that sit on top of it are much, much younger, starting at about 2 million years and covering the time span to 450,000. That's just a little short of half a million years ago, which to a geologist that's really not very long at all. The landscape of North Norfolk has got plenty of evidence that there's been an ice age in the not too distant past. The lumps and the bumps that you can see around have been left behind by an ice sheet that was here around 450,000 years ago. If you'd been around at that time, looking to the north, you would see nothing but a sheet of ice, hundreds of meters thick, stretching out over the horizon northwards. And in the process, it bulldozed the line of hills that's behind the, the coastline here that we call the Chroma Ridge. So the layers in the cliffs act as a kind of time machine. The deeper we go, the further back in time we go. So we've come here to West Runton Beach to have a look at the layers in the cliff that contain the evidence of what was happening in the past. If we begin at the top, that's the youngest deposits there, and they relate very closely to the landscape that we saw earlier on. The materials that have been left behind by the ice sheet include, as we can see at the top of the cliff here, a kind of mud that we call boulder clay and lots of sands and gravels. As we come down the cliff, we can see this very conspicuous black deposit here. These are the remnants of a river that was flowing in this part of the world about 700,000 years ago. And it's a very important, internationally important deposit, highly fossiliferous, from a warm period called the Cromerian Interglacial. We've got very conspicuous freshwater shells, including these snails here. But in addition, we've got pollen, seeds, teeth and bones of small animals, medium-sized animals right up to rhinos and even mammoth. It was in this layer, which is known as the West Runton freshwater bed, that this particular fossil was discovered. It's a type of rhinoceros, now extinct, and it lived in the Cromerian interglacial. That was 750,000 years ago. If we look at the layers below this, we find these brown and orangey coloured iron cemented deposits and they belong to a cold stage that happened before the Cromerian warm interglacial. And the further down the beach we go, the further back in time. We're a little lower down, we're into a different deposit called the Weybourne Crag, nowadays usually known as the Roxham Crag. But the important thing is here is that we can see that it's sitting directly on chalk. I'm afraid it's underwater, but there it is. Whilst that chalk underneath there is the age of the dinosaurs, that's over 70 million years old, this sitting on top is a, basically an ancient seabed from about 2 million years ago. So it illustrates that the geological record is far from complete. And we've actually got about 70 million years missing where the top of the chalk joins the bottom of the crag. So where did everything go in that time gap there? It's simply been eroded away 
and turned into sands and pebbles. So, we've come to the very bottom of the beach and I'm squatting down on chalk. Very different stuff to what we've been looking at before. As is very obvious, it's white and it's quite soft. It's actually a limestone that was laid down at the bottom of the sea. If you'd been here over 70 million years ago in the Cretaceous, you'd have been at the bottom of 100 metres at least of seawater. And accumulating on the seabed was this white mud, which we now call chalk, which actually is made of the finely ground up remains of organisms that lived and died in the sea in their countless numbers, creating this deposit of chalk that is over 400 meters thick under Norfolk. What I've got my knee on here is another conspicuous component of the Cretaceous chalk, which is flint. We've got here two forms of flint. We've got familiar flint pebbles, which forms a great deal of the beach. But these nodules still embedded here, this is where flint pebbles start their life. Flint nodules actually grow by a chemical process that began back in the Cretaceous under that seabed when silica was precipitated, replacing chalk under the seabed. Here on this part of the coast at West Runton, we do find some rather peculiar flints. As you can see, they're a kind of a ring flint with a hole that goes right the way through the middle. This one's been weathered out, but in its original state, of course, the hole in the centre would have been filled up with chalk. And this is a type of flint which has grown around a burrow of an animal that used to live in the seabed of the chalk sea. And it's interfered with the flint formation process, and the flint has actually formed in a ring around its burrow. These are called paramudra flints. And I think from here, we can turn our attention to the so-called chalk reef. In simple terms, it's just the exposed chalk under the seabed offshore. So we've come down to the very edge of the sea and you realise that geology doesn't stop at the coast. I'm standing on the chalk outcrop here on the beach, but it continues offshore. And in recent years, it's been recognised that this outcrop of the chalk seabed with its covering of gigantic flints is a rather special habitat and a very rich flora and fauna exist on it. And that's the basis for the chroma crab industry, of course. The biggest dangers on this coast would be from cliff falls. So I wouldn't recommend anybody digging into the cliffs to collect fossils. If you stick to collecting fossils from the beach, you're not doing any harm to any scientific exposures and it'll be safe to, to collect from beaches. The West Front and Freshwater Bed, for instance, which we've looked at this afternoon, that's a site of special scientific interest. So digging into that and damaging it would be wrong. <laughs>